In this video, we discuss the concept of bond polarity and how that affects the polarity of a molecule overall. All right, so we have studied that uh, in some simple molecules, like for example, ATF, this will be the Lewis dot structure for that ATF. Come, uh, the difference in electronegativity of the two atoms that are sharing the electrons of the bond uh, results in the appearance of what we call a dipole moment. Right? So fluorine is the most electronegative atom over the break table. That means that the electrons of the bond uh, uh, that is being shared between hydrogen and fluorine will be closer to the fluorine atom than to the hydrogen atom, and that generates a uh, slight negative charge in the fluorine atom and a slight positive charge on the hydrogen atom. Right? This molecule is now dipolar. It has a, a dipole moment. We call it a, a polar molecule. And we can say that there is a dipole moment uh, pointing in this direction. Okay, dipole moment is a vector, and uh, uh, where the uh, vector is pointing depends on the source of the material, right? So uh, if uh, some books prefer to uh, point uh, the vector from the negative end to the positive end, but some other sources prefer to uh, reverse the notation, uh, it's not particularly important as, as long as you use the same notation always. All right, so that's the concept of a, a polar bond. Now the question is, does the presence of polar bonds always end up in the molecule being polar? And you will see in just a little bit that that is actually not necessarily true. Okay? Uh, for starters, again, you can have a polar bond as long as there's a difference in electronegativity between the two atoms forming that bond. Now let's look at uh, possibilities of uh, polarity and non-polarity in molecules that have polar bonds. Okay, we can start very simply with, for example, water. Okay, so if we draw the Lewis dot structure of water, it will be like this. Okay, we know that oxygen is more electronegative than um, hydrogen, so that means that there will be a negative uh, end here and some positive ends right there. Okay. Something that uh, is also important, important from Lewis dot structures is that we can predict the shape around the central atom using the SCPR theory. And what we actually know is that the environment around this oxygen atom is tetrahedral, right? And uh, when, because you have two lone pairs, that results in a bent molecule, which has an angle uh, slightly smaller than uh, the tetrahedral angle of 109.5. Okay, and that is important because uh, that is going to tell you if the molecule will be polar or not, right? If we draw the dipole moments uh, in each bond, you will get one dipole moment vector uh, pointing from the oxygen to the hydrogen in this bond, and then another one pointing in that, uh, along that direction. And they should be exactly identical, they're just pointing in different directions. Now, to figure out if the molecule overall is polar, what you have to do is add up all of those dipole moment vectors and see if there's a resultant dipole moment vector for the entire molecule, or whether those dipole moment vectors cancel out. In the case of water, you can clearly see that if you sum these two vectors, then there is a total overall uh, uh, dipole moment vector, and that means that the water molecule is actually polar. All right, let's, we can do another example, for example, with CO2. Right, CO2, we can draw the Lewis dot structure as this. And because there's a difference in electronegativity between uh, the central atom and the terminal atoms, then there's dipole moments uh, along the vectors, right? So we are, here we have a dipole moment this way, and then a dipole moment that way. Okay, we should be exactly uh, the same in magnitude, but pointing in different directions. Now, when we, once we combine this Lewis dot structure with uh, uh, the SAPR theory, we can predict what the shape of that molecule would be around the central atom, right? And there's only two electron groups, and the electron group arrangement is linear. There's no lone, lone pairs. So again, what that means is that um, the uh, shape of this molecule around the central atom will be linear. All right, so now we, have, we, we know that we have uh, dipole moments uh, in each of the bonds, but the question is whether they cancel each other now or out or not, right? So you, when you see that, uh, uh, when you add these two vectors, you will actually see that the, there's no overall dipole moment vector for uh, CO2. This dipole moment is exactly canceled out by that dipole moment, and the CO2 molecule does not have an overall dipole moment. Okay, so CO2 is not polar. And again, notice that that is dictated not because the bonds are not polar, uh, but because the dipole moments in the existing bonds actually cancel each other out 
due to the shape of the molecule. Right? So that is the power of Lewis-Dot structures together with VSCPR theory to predict polarity. All right, uh, let's tr try to do a couple more examples and see um, if we can use this argument in more complex molecules. Let's think about the molecule carbon tetrachloride. Okay, carbon tetrachloride would be uh, would have a Lewis dot structure like this. Cl, 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 Cl. And I'm not going to draw the Lewis dot pairs for each one of them, but you will have six electrons, six electrons, six electrons, and six electrons. Uh, there will be three pairs of two electrons for each chlorine atom. Now, the important thing here is that uh, these bonds are all, all have dipole moments, right? So uh, you're going to have a dipole moment like that, and then like that, like that, and then like that. Right? That is the Lewis dot structure, but this does not represent what the shape of the molecule actually is. For that, we have to use the SAPR theory. And then what we know is that when there's four groups of electrons around the central atom, that is a tetrahedral electron uh, group arrangement, and because all of the electron groups happen to be bonds, then the shape of the actual molecule around that central atom will also be tetrahedral. Now, tetrahedral molecules are a little difficult to draw in two dimensions, okay, but we can try to do it like this, using this wedge notation that we have introduced in uh, other videos, okay, where you will have these chlorine, carbon, and chlorine atoms in the same plane, in the plane of the whiteboard, and then this chlorine atom coming out of the plane, and then the chlorine atom with the dashed line going inside the plane. Okay, to help uh, with this discussion, I'm actually going to use a macroscopic molecular model right here, which shows you what the tetrahedral shape is. Now, so to be able to determine whether this molecule is polar or not, uh, uh, it's very difficult to see if the four dipole moment vectors that you have uh, uh, in every one of the bonds, whether they cancel each other out, right? So when you have complex molecules, an easier thing to do is to actually divide the molecule into se uh, several pieces and then add the dipole moment vectors for those simpler pieces and then see if they cancel each other out. For a tetrahedral molecule, it's very easy to simply consider uh, first the sum of the dipole moment vectors of these two bonds right here, all right, and then add those two up, and then add the other two up and see if there's a cancellation or not. Right? So we can see that uh, the dipole moment vector uh, that is the sum of these two would be in this direction, much as what happens with water. Okay, and then the dipole moment vector for these other two uh, bonds right here right, would be exactly in that direction, which is opposite to what we had, okay, but pointing, I mean, in the same direction of what we had, uh, the same orientation, but pointing in a different direction. Okay, so you can clearly see that for a tetrahedral molecule, uh, in which all four bonds are the same, then there's no dipole moment vector overall, right? Again, the dipole moment vector from two of the bonds would cancel perfectly the dipole moment vector from the other two uh, bonds, and you have that this molecule is not polar, okay? Uh, uh, to complicate this a little bit better and uh, a, little, a little more and try to understand more uh, interesting uh, concepts here, I can now try to replace this uh, uh, atom with an atom that is a little different. Okay, so now this will be uh, a different atom altogether. So if this was originally carbon uh, tetrachloride, we can now actually make it be chloroform, which would be uh, this molecule. Okay. All right, so the question is, is this molecule now polar? Right, so you would proceed as you would be uh, before, right? So uh, now it turns out that you have to figure out uh, uh, the dipole moment vectors uh, in the various uh, pieces of the molecule, right? So uh, in this case, the symmetry is such that we can do uh, an interesting thing, and that is just to calculate the dipole moment vector on this uh, unequal bond right here and see what it's pointing and what its size is and then try to compare that to the dipole moment vector that comes from the sum of the uh, three dipole moment ve vectors of the other bonds. Right, so this is CH, and actually carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen, right? So the dipole moment vector uh, will actually be pointing up, okay? It will be a small, a small vector pointing up. And then these other atoms are actually uh, carbon chlorine, okay? And uh, uh, the overall, uh, the resulting dipole moment vector is also pointing up with a larger uh, uh, modulus, right? So this molecule will have uh, no real dipole moment uh, uh, in the molecule, right? Because uh, the sum of this vector, which is pointing up, with that vector that is also pointing up, even if it's smaller in uh, magnitude, gives you an overall dipole moment in that direction, which means that uh, chloroform 
actually has happens to be polar. Okay, so a simple substitution from one chlorine to uh, uh, hydrogen uh, makes the molecule uh, be polar. Okay? Uh, we can continue to do the substitutions to uh, learn a little bit more about uh, this polarity. Okay, so I can uh, make this molecule now be dichloromethane. Okay, so dichloromethane would be uh, this molecule. And then using the same arguments that we have used before for carbon tetrachloride, we will see that there's no uh, cancellation of dipole moments. So this molecule will also be polar. Again, if we take these three CHs, uh, the dipole moments are going to be pointing this way and that way, so you're going to have an overall dipole moment uh, vector okay, pointing up from uh, the carbon to the hydrogens. In the case of the carbon-chlorine bonds, you're not going to have a dipole moment vector okay, pointing from the chlorines to the carbon, right? So notice that there's no cancellation of the dipole moment vectors either, right? So you'll have a dipole moment uh, vector pointing up. Here you will have another dipole moment vector pointing up with a smaller uh, uh, magnitude, so the sum of those two vectors is actually not zero, so carbon uh, uh, sorry, dichloromethane is also a polar molecule. Well, you can use these arguments of uh, shape uh, and uh, a cancellation of dipole moments to then uh, take any, mole any molecule that has uh, covalent bonds, okay, and then from the Lewis dot structures and VSAPR theory, uh, then predict whether that molecule will be polar or not. All right, so in this video, we have introduced the concept of uh, polar bond. And then we have uh, extended that concept to see if uh, a molecule that has polar bonds actually has an overall polarity or not.